with Capo not here, um, what is that unusual? And what do you what, what do you make of how much how that might his decision how that might affect his draft stock if if, if any? Well. This is not nothing new for 20 years now. The Memorial Cup's been played the week before. The World Championships, you know, it's unfortunate the schedule worked out the way it did this year, but typically it's done a week earlier. Um, it has zero effect, really. I, you know, I, I know he would be here if he could, but, you know, he, he's, won a, he's a world champion before he's even stepped on the ice in the National Hockey League, and that's a pretty special event in his life. And the fact that he's he's not here, I know for sure he would be here if he could. So I, I, I think the teams understand that, and uh, you know the teams at the top, they're just going to have to spend a little bit more time with him when he comes over for the draft. Some might even say that he helped his stock. Um, would what is is it fair to might he be challenging Jack for for the number one spot given what he's done um, thus far and what he did at the Worlds? Well, for sure, the two of them are at the top of this draft class, and you know, you you can't because they're they're not that similar a player. There is a difference between them, and each team knows what they like in a player. They know what their their situation is. They're gonna they they both could have the Jack as the top. They both could have Paco as the top. So who who knows uh, what the teams are thinking? All we know is that they're they're both going to be ready to play in the NHL in the near future, and they're both destined for success. Dave, can you talk what are your thoughts? Their, their, what they think they're capable of players? Be, because they're, again, no two players are alike, and, and, and you know I'm not a big believer in uh, making projections, comparisons to, to players, but right now, uh, Kako has gotten the status. He's a little more physically developed, and that dictates the type of game that he's capable of playing, the situations he can be used in, the results that he gets. And uh, skill levels, smarts, skating, you go down the whole list of check boxes to check off, and he has those. Jack is the same. Jack comes across more as that skilled elite forward where you play the game with speed, quickness, and they both have some natural abilities. And it's going to be hard to say down the road who's going to be better than who because they're both going to bring different things to the table for their NHL teams. But they're both going to produce in the National Hockey League, and they're going to help their both their teams climb in the standings. What are your thoughts on the, the number of elite players the U.S. development program has produced for this class? This is a special group. They're, uh, you know, we, we spent time with them during the year, and we've had them here all week, and they really kind of live up to that. Uh, exp that projection of being a, a special group. I, I anticipate that USA Hockey will be have the biggest smiles on their face on draft day because the, the number of players to go in the first round, the top three rounds, and through the entire draft, I think they're going to set a record for that program. And, it, and it's nice to see when that happens and when that comes along. But all, all, all those players are good. This is the first time, you know, at one point we had all their players ranked on our on our list. So it's an exceptional year for the program, and these kids have worked hard to get the recognition that they're getting. What's the wow factor with Alex Turcotte for you? His, he has an ability to read the play, go out there, and, and make the right decisions and, and execute the plays. He just has a real good understanding of the game, but everything about him with his speed, his skill set there, there's a little bit of decept deceptiveness there where that's hard to defend against. It's not to say that small, shorter players haven't been drafted first overall. You can look at Kane, but when you look, what, what makes Jack Hughes stand out for his size to have him ranked as the number one North American skater? I, I went to a camp in July in Toronto, and the best three players on the ice were Taylor Hall, Connor McDavid, and John Tavares. This was at a skills camp. Next best player was Jack Hughes, and you, it was a series of skill drills that they were doing that involved skating, quickness, speed, execution, precision. 
And right away, I, you know, you could see he had he already has an NHL shot, for example, because they, they finished it on the play. So he, he's got that talent that he belongs in that group. And the NHL clubs, they don't look at size anymore. They, they look at good players, best players, what they bring to the table. And scouting has changed in that way, too. You, you don't pick apart a player and look at what they don't do well because a lot of that you can coach. You, you dwell on what they do, what they bring to the table, what they do well. And once you know at the, at the level that these kids are playing at, competing at, if they can deliver, Chances are they're going to deliver when they get to the National Hockey League as well. What you stands out about, about Dylan Cousins and his, his story? The fact that he's from Yukon, or <laughs> <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing, yeah. right? <laughs> well, it, 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 it's a, it's an interesting story and an interesting byline. But he again, he's a, a young man who's still growing into his frame, and he brings a lot to the table when it comes to speed because speed can help dictate what you do on the ice. He's shown that he's got the, the hockey sense, the scoring ability. One of the things that we like that every game that we are at, when he's on the ice, he finds a way to generate and create a scoring chance. When you look at this draft, obviously Hughes is where he is, but Cousins, Dash, Seagers, I mean, how good is it for top end centers here in that top ten of 15 picks? There, there's a lot, uh, and the teams have a selection, a wide variety of, of players to choose from. Um, I, I don't think they're going to get carried away if they're going to analyze the first line center, second line center, third line center. They just want good players that are going to step into their lineups. But all, all these players, they bring the right mix of skills and intangibles that they're going to bring value to their team. So I, I know we kind of say it every year that everyone's going to get a good pick in the first round. But this is a, it's a deep draft at the top end for the first 30, 40 players. What, how many of these guys do you think could contribute in the NHL there right away? My, my standard line that I'm supposed to say is the ones that can make the team out of training camp. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, it's a, the National Hockey League, it's, it's a men's league. It's the best league in the world for a player to get into the lineup. Uh, depending on what the situation is with the club that drafts the players, if they can go and show that they can play in the NHL and contribute, stay in the lineup on a daily basis, you know, there's always the players at the top end are going to get that opportunity, but you always find there's going to be one or two players that are taken a little later in the draft that are in the right place at the right time and they're ready for that opportunity to take advantage of it. So you know, every year you start out with five or six players having a good shot. Trevor Zegers is a guy that we didn't know we'd be hearing from until earlier today with Capo Capo not, uh, speaking. What stands out to you about, uh, about his game? He, he's got personality to his game, uh, and he's one of these high-character players on, on the ice where he can rise to the occasion. And he wants the puck. He wants to score. He wants to be, be in on the play. So he goes out there and makes things happen. He's a player that he forces you to notice him. You don't have to go out there and say, you know, where's number nine? I'm looking for him, I can't find him there. He jumps out and pops at you every game. What Last about, question. What about his style and all the amazing plays that he was able to do this season? Sorry, who's that? Trevor Zegers. Like I say, Trevor, uh, it's unfortunate for him in USA Hockey that he was injured at, at the U18s. He wasn't 100% healthy. But when, when the game's on the line and the, and the situation calls for a goal, like he's one of the guys you want to put on the ice, but also he's the guy you can depend to put out there when you want to defend that lead and not let anybody get back into a game. He's just a very reliable, team-first kind of competitor.